We're with Dean Ubedullah. Dean, okay, let me just do a little bit of an introduction. Dean, um, how would I put it? Dean's an unusual person in that he is, in my opinion, interesting because he's breaking a stereotype. He's an entrepreneur building a brand and he's doing a great social, cultural job. Um, tell us, Dean, a little bit about that because I'm interested in social stereotyping and how some countries and some individuals from a certain ethnicity kind of happily allow themselves to be stereotyped. What's the challenge you face as an American in America with a very Arab sounding surname? I think that, well, the challenge for us in America is, is just trying to show fellow Americans that there's good, there's, there's Arabs and Muslims who have a culture, who are funny, who have the same struggle as they do. Uh, sadly in America, and it got worse over the last few months to be honest, it became more Muslims and Arabs were the other again, like it was right after 9-11. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a struggle for us to use our art, in my, my case comedy, that's all I've got, to try to be funny and, and show people we're part of the fabric of this country just like anyone else. And, and at the same time you have to be aware of like stereotypes of, of terrorists and playing those roles in movies or TV shows. I won't. I look like a white guy. I'm not going to get cast as that. And what inspired you to move into comedy? Because obviously at the end of the day, you know, um, being self-employed is tough for anything. Yes. But being a self-employed comedian sounds to me to be incredibly tough because you either, you're either funny or you're struggling. If you've seen my act, you know how tough it is. It's really hard. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing I'm making a living um, at this point. I was a lawyer. Um, I didn't like being a lawyer. I'd always enjoyed making people laugh. That's all it was about. I got a job as a page at NBC, a television network in the States, and then got hired at a TV show called Saturday Night Live doing rights and clearance, which is perfectly legal work. And that was like going to comedy graduate school. And while I was there, I just started doing more and more stand-up comedy, more and more writing. I was able to write some things for the show over time. Um, so that was my transition from lawyer to something I wanted to do. I mean, I'm a big believer in all these ideas of inspire and empower. I think you should go after your dreams. You, you'd rather, I'd rather fail at something I love than succeed at something I don't care about. Like, you should go after your dreams and take that chance so you don't have regrets later. And when you were young and when you were studying and stuff, did, was your Start fantasy... Young. I think I'm a little young still. I'm not, <laughs> right. Was your fantasy to be on stage, was that like an image in your head of yourself? My dream was the Wanda portal. Even before it was invented, that Amazing. was my dream to be on that. And now it's come true. So I'm going to wrap... After this, I'm retiring. It's my Amazing. last interview. You're on. You're literally um, on. Nearly. My my dream when I was young was to be active in politics, like run for a senator or a congressman in the states. That's why I went to law school. Uh, didn't realize a Muslim last name like Obidallah might be an impingement, a hindrance to getting elected to office. I has, I still am not given up on that dream. Maybe one day trying to run for office. Um, but I love the idea of comedy because I talk about political stuff all the time. So for me, it's a merger of the two worlds I love, politics and making people laugh. So I could talk about things and try to make a difference, try to make a change, have an impact on society, about people's perception of us. At the same time, have a good time and people laugh and it's not a speech. You know, people just, they let their guard down, they hear it, they hear comedy. So in a way, we're like comedy activists. That's the way I view it. Like and, what, sorry, and what role did, you know, ethnicity play in terms of ambition? Were you really pushed by your parents into... To be a lawyer, not to be a comedian. My yeah. parent, my father's Palestinian from Palestine. My yeah. mom's Sicilian. Her parents were born in Sicily. So I'm first generation. They wanted the best of the world. They wanted, you know, a, a stable job. My sister's a doctor, a PhD, a psychologist, and I'm a lawyer. They were perfectly happy, and I had to ruin their dream and, and so become a comedian. So suddenly, I want to be a comedian. It's a bit like saying, uh, I want to be a woman or something yeah, like I, that. It could have been easier telling them I wanted to be, I was gay or something. Yeah, yeah. Than easier than saying, saying I want to be a comedian. Like, well, you're gay, but it's still you're a gay lawyer. <laughs> you're, okay, <so laughs> like, you're a you straight should... comedian. They don't like that that exactly. much. You know, Arab dad. But at the end of the day, they, they truly were supportive because I already had a law degree. I was admitted to the bar in New York and Jersey. So they had a little bit more sense of I have a fallback that's realistic. If I had quit law school to do it, I think it would have caused a lot more friction between us. But thankfully, they were supportive. And it's important. You need the support of your parents or your family. It's hard to go out and but an entrepreneur. That's what we are as comics. You're going out there alone. You need a, a safety net of people who are supporting you and giving you that love. And what are the challenges? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think a lot of people would say that, you know, in America, if, if you said you're an Arab, people wouldn't immediately think you've got a sense of humor, you're particularly easily amused, and obviously you see around you the fact that nobody's any different. How do you fight that, or do you face it at all? I can't tell you how many times reporters have said to me, oh, Arab comedy is not an oxymoron. How can Arabs be funny? And they're not even being racist, because up until recent time, when I was myself and some of the others were lucky to be on American TV, there was never Arabs on TV being funny, right? people of Arab heritage. 
Um, so that was breaking down that stereotype. Now part of it is showing people in America, in the States, that the Arabs here in the Middle East and Muslims here laugh. I mean, that's something you don't see in American television, the idea of the funny, happy Muslim or funny, happy Arab. You see angry ones or you see victims. I mean, we do see things from Iraq where, or, or Pakistan where there are victims of terrorism there, but there's never that in between, just like that human moment where they're just being human beings, surviving, being struggling, normal. paying their bills, living their life, raising their kids, like you'd see of American families or other ethnicities on American TV all the time. So, you know, my dream is that we have some TV show like Everybody Loves Ramadan yeah, on TV right, or something, right. something fun where you can have like, that's my dream and my work so much is to get us on entertainment media and because there's no doubt media can, uh, it can demonize and I believe strongly that media can humanize and it's our job and it's our burden and like people have said here before at this conference, it's our obligation to go out there and do our things. Well, I think it's our obligation to tell our story and we should be the ones doing that and we have to go out there, tell it accurately and it should be through our voice, not and through who, someone else's. And who inspires you in terms of whether it's in business or comedy or film, who, who, who do you find inspiring? In business, it's a barrage by far. After that, then mm -hmm. uh, in, in comedy, I like the comics who have taken chances at difficult times in American history. Richard Pryor, who talked about yeah. being African-American in America in the 60s and 70s, which was so hard. Um, I like John Stewart a great deal. Talks about social issues. He teaches you, and he's still funny. Um, so I, I really admire the comics who talk about the real issues and try to change people's opinion on it and, and have a point of view. But it's interesting because some of those guys, Richard Pryor, Woody Allen, Chris Rock, I mean, they use their ethnicity in a way that bridges the divide as opposed right. to well, stereotypes. We're trying to do. We're trying to do that too. I mean, yeah. our goals... Anytime we talk about a stereotype, it's usually in a way to break it down. Um, you know, I, I do jokes now about, especially in the Middle East, about other Arabs and other, because as I've learned, you know, the Lebanese are not like the Egyptians. The Jordanians are different than the Emiratis. In America, this is a monolithic view, all the Arab, the Arab world. It's right. not the Arab world. Every country is different. Sure. And I find that, you know, when you're having fun, making fun of each other's groups, everyone laughs together. We're in this together. We're having a good time together. In the States, my biggest thing is I will never do jokes that further the idea that we're terrorists or we're sleeper cells waiting to attack Americans. Yeah. That's where the line has to be drawn. Um, other things are minor stereotypes I, don't, I really don't get upset about. And how do you watch the line? I mean, I guess one of the challenges of doing comedy here is that there are certain subjects which I guess are a bit more taboo, unlike America where you can kind Excluded. of say anything. In fact, there are certain areas you can't talk about any, certain parts in the Middle East you can't speak of any, like of sex. Or religion, no demonizing any religion, and no stuff about the government where you live, except for Lebanon, where the guy actually said, "Say whatever you want, but if you make fun of Hezbollah, you're on your own." He really said that. So that was a little a little note. You no, made it here. No, no Hezbollah jokes. That was really pretty clear. In America, there are limitations. There, people don't understand. I tell them we have economic limitations in America. If I say certain statements, I can say it one time. The consequences, I might not work again as a comic, uh, and it's it could be about a whole a whole bunch of issues. It could be about making fun of President Bush at a time. Now, in time, it became easier, but people are like, oh, you're Arab, you're unpatriotic, how can you talk about President Bush? Um, in time, it got easier and easier. But there are consequences in the States, too. We have freedom of speech in theory. In practice, there are economic considerations. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dean.